Daryl Santos, uh, also from NTHU. And he will tell us about environmental effects on aging activities by extinction free mid infrared synthesis. Uh, let's make open the speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dara Jill Santos, and I am a first year master's student from National Tsinghua University. And my supervisor is Dr. Tomotsu Gugoto. And I will be presenting my research, ongoing research, entitled Environmental Effects of AGN on AGN Activities via Extinction Free Mid Infrared Census. So, first, let us clarify a few things about my, some terms in my title. So, AGN is short for Active Galactic Nucleus. So, it is widely believed that most galaxies have a supermassive black hole residing in their center. And these black holes accrete or collect materials along the way. And due to the viscosity of the collected materials, this causes an emission of radiation, and the physical manifestation of this emission is the AGN. And AGNs are believed to be tracers of galaxy formation and evolution, because it is widely believed that the AGN and even the supermassive black hole grow together with the galaxy. And when we say galaxy environment, we're not dealing about forests or how many trees are there in the galaxy, but it's more of describing the actual vicinity of our target galaxy. And usually it's described by whether the galaxy belongs to a cluster, so we call it a cluster galaxy, or if it doesn't belong in a cluster, we call it a field galaxy. And the properties of these two types of galaxies differ because the cluster galaxies uh, experience some environmental effects which include gravitational interactions. It's about the interactions between the gravitational potentials of the neighboring galaxies and hydrodynamical effects which include the uh, interactions of the materials on the neighboring galaxies. And actually, the effects of environment on aging activities is an active topic of research because many people have published papers about it, but they have varying conclusions because they have different definitions of environment and they also have different sample selection criteria, so they focus on different types of galaxies and also they have different definitions of AGN activity. But in this research, I will focus on the in mid-infrared selected galaxies in the Acri NEP wide field, as what Dr. Song Jin Kim has discussed previously. So the mid-infrared census will be very, the key to this research because there are AGNs that are obscured, meaning there is dust covering the AGN, which uh, makes it uh, undetectable in optical and soft x-rays. And hard X-ray surveys are not that sensitive to see AGNs. And radio, uh, for the radio survey, not all AGNs are radio loud. That's why mid-infrared census is advantageous in this case. And we make use of the ACME telescope compared to Weiss and Spitzer, because as what the previous talks about the ACRI and the wide field have discussed, the ACRI has the continuous uh, near to mid-infrared uh, range of the filters compared to Weiss and Spitzer, wherein they have gaps in their filters. So we can make sure that the mid-infrared data is uh, complete for the ACRI. And so I am here to help unveil the AGN activity environment relation for galaxies selected in the ACRI NAP wide field. So I would like to show you a, a cartoon of how did my sample selection go in just one slide. So I used the multi-wavelength catalog provided by Dr. Song Jin Kim. And then I have the mid-infrared AGN census provided by Ting Wen Wang, who discussed this uh, research yesterday. And also, the photometric redshifts are calculated by Simon Ho, who also gave a talk about this yesterday. And the local density and cluster catalogs are provided by Kevin Wang, who is currently looking for the cluster galaxies in the Acari NEP wide field. And guess who is this? It's me. <laughs> okay, so I don't have much catalog to uh, provide, but I will be here to help unveil this environment AGN relation. And let's not forget my beloved advisor. 
And so I would like to briefly discuss a few things about the catalogs that I used. So the first one is the multi black catalog as what Dr. Song Jin Kim has uh, discussed a while ago. So it has this area in square degrees and this number of sources. And the next one is the mid-infrared census by Ting Hong Wang. So in her study, she made sure that there is the availability of mid-infrared data. So it must, the sources must have these detections in these particular bands. And she used a, a spectral energy distribution code uh, named uh, SIGAL, and it is used to uh, estimate the galaxy properties. And we made sure that the reduced chi-square should be less than 10 to make sure that the properties are from the good fit. So they are sure to be accurate. Next, the photometric redshifts are provided by Simon Ho using a particular SED fitting template code called the FAIR. And we also use the star galaxy identification from his research to make sure that we are only working on galaxies and not including stars. And lastly, we have the local galaxy and density and cluster galaxy catalog provided by Kevin Wong. So in this research, we use local galaxy density as our main, uh, main uh, description of environment. So this is the formula. It's 10 over theta squared, where theta is the angular distance from the 10th nearest neighboring galaxy. And actually, this sigma is very large. So we try to make it small, but still the uh, actual meaning is the same by dividing it with the median LGD for each redshift bin and we call the resulting quantity sigma star, or the normalized local density, or NLD. And the lastly, the cluster galaxy catalog, it has the list of cluster galaxies and the accurate NAP white field. And it was made possible by applying a percolation algorithm called Friends of Friends algorithm to overdense objects in the white field. And to clarify, we have two uh, definitions of AGN activity. We have the contribution fraction, which is the ratio of the AGN luminosity over the total IR luminosity. And we also have the number fraction, which tells us the number of AGNs over the number of galaxies in the specific density bit. And we also apply Ting Wen Wang's criteria for AGN and star forming galaxy identification. So if the frac AGN, the contribution fraction, is greater than or equal to 0.2, then we classify it as AGN. Otherwise, it's a star-forming galaxy. And so I am here now to discuss the current progress of my research. It's still an ongoing uh, uh, research, so if you have some comments, I would uh, gladly accept them. And so I, I have the sources, and I try to divide them first into different luminosity groups based on how they were defined uh, as infrared galaxies, luminous IRGs, or ultra-luminous IRGs. So uh, please take note of this because this will be very important in my results. And I also divided it into different redshift bins for each luminosity groups. So my sources range from around 0 to 1.14. And as you can see here, the contribution fraction versus the normalized local density for the sources with log LIR less than or equal to 12, there's no clear correlation. But then, as you can see here, the contribution fraction decreases with NLD when the log LIR is greater than 12 for ultra-luminous infrared galaxies. Also, we look at the AGN number fraction versus NLD. So still there is no clear correlation for lower luminosities, but then you will see that the AGN number fraction decreases also with NLD. But as you can see, we cannot prove it on the lower redshift because there's no, there are no sources for the lower redshift part. So here, at this point, I would like to postulate on the possible physical uh, explanation of this uh, phenomenon. So previous studies have shown that denser environments are cold gas poor environments. And it's because the neighboring galaxies cause these particular environmental effects. So ramp pressure stripping and galaxy harassment are some of the environmental effects that cause the stripping of cold gas. And because of this stripping of cold gas, 
The availability of cool gas is limited and it affects AGN and star forming activities. So they go, uh, when you are at denser environments, these activities become less pronounced. But why does AGN activity get slower with NLD for our ULIRGs only? So remember, if a galaxy is highly luminous, that means it has more stars and it's more chance of having more occurrence of feedback because there are more stars that can have starbursts. And it's why uh, some simulations have also shown that uh, starburst, uh, bursty stellar feedback causes the uh, ejection of cold gas from the gal galactic nucleus and it's effective in suppressing uh, nuclear, uh, nuclear activities. And it can also uh, suppress star formation in many different ways. But at the denser environment, I said a while ago that you have lesser amount of cold gas. And we postulate that at denser environments, the galactic uh, feedback would be, bet would be more efficient in removing or further heating the remaining cold gas in the galaxy. And as to make this postulate uh, more concrete, we also show the specific star formation rate versus NLD. So as you can see here, specific star formation rate tells you the number of stars created per year. And as you can see, there's not much clear correlation again at the lower luminosities, log LLR less than or equal to 12. But you will see here that the specific star formation rate also decreases with NLD. And again, we don't have much sources for the low redshift, so we can prove it here. In short, what I postulate is that the presence of the increased feedback in the ULIRGs causes the AGN and star forming activities to decrease at denser environment. In short, it looks like that environmental effects alone cannot uh, affect the AGN activities. This is an ongoing research. I still have a lot of things to do. I still have to make use of an another description for environment. It's called cluster centric distance. It is the distance of the galaxy from its nearest cluster center. And I will also look at these quantities and also see the relationship between my previous normalized local density and this new cluster centric distance. And to summarize, I exploited the advantage of the mid-infrared census to look at the AGM activity environment relation in the Akari MEBY field. And I saw that the, for ULIRGs, the AGM contribution fraction and specific star formation rate decreases with environment. And I also presented a postulate to explain this uh, phenomenon. And investigation is still ongoing to unveil this particular relation. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Joe. Um, nice talk. Yeah, very nice talk. Um, I'm a little bit confused. Earlier, I thought you combined Akari with other databases and to construct the SEDs, right? That makes me wonder whether you are biased by the least sensitive mission. But now, if from the summary, you, so you use Akari almost exclusively for the work? Yes, yes. We use the Akari MEP white field only for this uh, particular research. Well, when it comes to bias, it yes, uh, we are only focusing on the infrared galaxies at this point, since uh, this white field only has uh, infrared galaxies. All right, uh, I'm sorry. And, and also, the, the, your main conclusion that for uh, luminous uh, systems, you find that co uh, correlation. Yes, the correlation. That makes me wonder, why would you just concentrate on a uh, similar Z and then see the luminosity uh, relation rather than you just include everything? It just made me wonder if it, whether it's a distance uh, uh, effect. Yes, yes. Um, I think it's also good to include that on my next uh, current, next progress. But yes, uh, distance can somehow might affect the luminosity of my samples. Other questions? Why do you think that the viscosity is 
very much, very much important in Asian environment, for example? Ah, actually, um, it's just a term to describe how the accretion of the AGN causes the emission of radiation. So as you see, accretion means the collection of materials like gold gas, dust, and many other things in the galaxy. So the, AG, the supermassive black hole accretes materials, right? And the collision, the forces that act along with the materials that accrete, that causes an emission of radiation because of the energy produced by these forces. And this physical manifestation, that's what we call the AGF, the physical manifestation of that uh, emission of radiation. So it means that the uh, viscosity is only important in the denser environments, not in not necessarily. Uh, viscosity is, ha it happens at all AGS, at all supermassive black holes. It's just a term, collective, it's a collective term to describe the forces that act on the uh, accreted material and the supermassive black hole. Okay, uh, let's close the session there. Let's thank Aaron and all the speakers this afternoon.